Hello, I was watching a video by Kermitz the other day, a fellow Kiwi who has a YouTube channel and he does a lot of interesting stuff. I'll put a link in the description if you want to have a look at that. And he was um, doing a long distance flight where he was using antennas made by this pro drone company, which is a, a place in Poland, who specialize, well they don't specialize exactly, but they do make mostly antennas. And I thought, well it's been a while since I had any upgrades to my FPV ground station or goggles. So I thought I'd get some of these because they had some interesting types of antennas that I haven't tried and I will do a sort of a side by side comparison to you know see how they perform. So that's what this video is going to be about and I got one of these here. The shipping was quite cheap too which was the other thing that I thought was good about this. Uh, so I got one of these, it's a Pagoda and I wanted to get one of these ones that has quite a long stalk on it because the antenna that I'm using at the moment is just the one that came with my Fat Shark goggles. It's the Immersion RC Spironet, I think they call it, and it uh, it doesn't have a right angle connection on it either. That was the other thing I wanted. So I have to bend at 90 degrees, and it doesn't really clear my head very well because I have a tendency to look down and to the left a little bit when I'm flying unconsciously. Anyway, so I wanted one that had a longer stalk on it like that. Um, this thing is called a mini cross here. It was a little bit cheaper about six weeks ago when I ordered it for some reason. $16 was what I paid. Um, but anyway, I haven't, haven't tried one of these so I thought I'd give that a try and I do have one of these. I believe this is what the Spironet is actually. But um, actually the Spironet might be three lobes only. This is four lobes and again it's a much taller stalk on the antenna so I can get it to clear my head better and you can also choose um, right angle uh, SMA angle I think is the one I chose and you can choose the polarity as well polarization so that's pretty good and the last one I got was this little very small triple feed patch antenna and as you can see the prices are pretty decent on these and the shipping to me here from Poland to New Zealand was only five dollars or five dollars fifty or something like that so overall I thought that was a pretty good deal and that's why I embarked on this test well the package has finally arrived and I've got to say overall I'm not very impressed with the shipping here. It took a full two weeks for the ProDrone people to even send this after my order was placed and then it took about two and a half weeks to get to New Zealand and then another week and a half or so inside New Zealand to get to my place from Auckland which should have only taken two days normally and I think I see the problem now because at some point this whole box or almost the entire box seems to have been sitting in a puddle somewhere because it's completely soaked and the cardboard is just all falling apart like this and I'm going to blame that on the Polish side because as you can see here on this invoice there's a lot of mold growing on that piece of paper and I don't think that much mold would have grown just since it got here in New Zealand and I think the delay in New Zealand was because they had to repackage it with this plastic uh, outer case so that it wasn't going to get anything else wet while it was being transported with other mail I think Anyway, it's here now and it's fairly nicely packed, all bubble wrap. And the stuff that I'm buying doesn't matter if it gets wet anyway, it's just antennas. And I've got some, uh, some chocolates here, some Polish chocolates, isn't that nice? So these are the goggles that I've been using for the last three and a half or so years, or whenever they came out is when I bought them. Um, and this isn't really important because as long as I'm using the same equipment across all the different antennas, it doesn't really matter, but I just thought I'd... Uh, mention this for the sake of completeness and just in case anybody asks and I know that there are much fancier goggles around these days and this um, receiver module that I'm using too is looking a bit dated and this is probably the next thing that I'll upgrade I'll get one of those diversity things so that I can make use of these uh, more different styles of antennas that I have now but I cannot say that I've ever really felt any deficiency in this it's been perfectly fine for me maybe I'm a little bit lucky in that where I fly is a very very quiet radio area I'm not in the middle of a, a city or anything so perhaps that um, is why things are working out so well for me anyway this is what I was calling the spyro net antenna that I've been using with this and likewise I've never really had any complaints about this it's been working quite well uh, it actually has four lobes I think when I look on the bottom there so my mistake um, is this actually a spyro net I'm not sure Anyway, this is the one that came with the goggles, and I was a little bit baffled as to why they gave you a straight one, I mean a straight connector here instead of a 90 degree one, because nobody's going to use this with the antenna sticking straight out like that, are they? They're going to have to bend it up like that, and it doesn't... Uh, anyway, it's fine apart from the bending bit. 
So here are the antennas, the other antennas that I tested. So I'm going to test six. These two here, this is a Almway one, uh, which um, actually turned out to work pretty good. So anyway, we'll see the results. I've had that for a while, but I never really use it. Um, here's the Pagoda. It's fairly nice and long, and I got this one with a right angle connection. And they've actually individually tested all of these antennas and they've written on here the lower and upper frequency ranges and then a number there 1.2 I think that's uh, some kind of a signal to noise ratio measurement perhaps I don't really know what that is but they've done that for all of the antennas here quite nicely done um, this one is incidentally a fair bit longer on the stalk which is kinda nice uh, and then we have the fairly small patch antenna again well, is this tuned? Maybe it wasn't. Oh, yeah, there it is. There we go. So they've all been hand, maybe not tuned, but hand tested at least. And then this one here as well. This is the antenna that I was using on the plane. Again, this doesn't really matter, but just in case you're interested, this is what it was. And while I was sort of bending this one to, into place, the little plastic cover broke right off. So I thought I'd take a photo of what was inside as well. I don't know what you call these ones, but they seem to work fairly well. This extremely thin looking piece of yellow plastic is actually very, very rigid and it held it into place quite nicely. So nothing got bent when I broke the cover off and I just um, put a little bit of super glue and glued it back on and everything seems to be fine. The transmitter that I was using with this is a fairly generic Eachine 600 milliwatt one. So what I did was I sent my plane out to the other side of the farm and had it loiter around and I just switched all of these antennas out they all have the same SMA style connections on them and I just did uh, I let the plane do two circles of its loiter for each antenna just so that we could get a uh, idea of the reception as the plane turned around from different angles and all of the antennas would be seeing the same angle of the plane at uh, the same times so in the following footage you can look at the the heading of the plane, the degrees at the top middle of the screen and well I've, I've lined the videos up so that they're all sort of approximately pointing, the plane's pointing the same way at the same time. So in theory the signal that the receiver is getting should be very very similar. Now I thought about speeding these clips up to make the video a little bit more succinct but then I decided against that because it doesn't really give you an idea of how quickly the, uh, like when you get interference you want to see how long the interference stays around for and how quickly it goes away. So for that reason I've let these two circles, it's about one minute per circle I think, and I've let them play out fully and I'll put a, an annotation on the screen to show you where to skip to to get to the next test. So I did two tests, the first one was this one that we're looking at now. The plane is approximately two kilometers away, it, that's the center of the loiter position roughly, and while the plane was circling around there I was just moving my head a little bit to try and get the best picture that I could. This is kind of what I do when I'm flying anyway and I think probably a lot of people, other people do as well. Maybe even subconsciously you're just sort of moving your head to sort of get that picture about as good as you can. And I think that's the only way to really do this test and I think it's fair because I was doing this for all of the antennas in the same way. Then I brought the plane back and I had it circle with me standing in the middle of the the return to launch circle. Uh, radius is 120 meters and the height is 100 meters above me. And for this test I just stood without moving pointing the antenna or for the omnidirectional antennas they were just sort of pointing straight up like normal um, but for the directional antennas I just had them pointing directly straight out towards the side and the idea was to get an idea of how directional they are or how bad the signal got when the plane was directly on the opposite direction of the antennas. hope that makes sense. So that's what we're looking at right now and in case you hadn't figured it out already the worst reception for the directional antennas comes when the plane is facing around about 300 to 320 degrees heading. So I'll just let the rest of this play out. I think we have about a minute or so of this left and then I'll come back with some summary.
Okay, so that should give you a pretty good idea of what I was seeing in my goggles while I was doing this test, but there are a couple of things that you cannot determine just by looking at that video. One of those things is how much was I needing to move my head around in order to maintain a nice picture for the first test when the plane was far away. So I've lined up the antennas in roughly the order of how much uh, how much difference it made to move your head around to try and get the you know just sort of tweaking and adjusting the picture subconsciously at least in my case and for these two antennas here basically didn't make a whole lot of difference this one it seemed to make a slight bit of difference only just barely perceptibly noticeable and obviously there's a big rift here between these three and those three but within this it was significantly easier to maintain a good picture with this one um, than it was with these two and also these two I think yeah I could I could tell the difference there, that this was the worst one for uh, having to keep your head still it's not necessarily a bad thing because that kind of means that it's a more narrow gain and you could go further away with it so it all there's all compromises all over the place with this stuff um, the other thing that you can't tell by looking at the video was which one of these antennas did I feel inclined to use for the rest of the flight because I was flying home slice 4 which can fly for quite a long time and I had a good half an hour left in the tank after doing this test um, so I used up that half an hour and I found myself reaching for this one and again it's a compromise and I think the main reason that I went for this one was because of the kind of flying that I do or the location that I fly in relative to myself and by that I mean if I'm standing here I'm only going to be flying in that direction because where I live on the, I'm on, on the corner of the property and I can't really go in the other direction because I'll be flying over the neighbor's farm and I, I don't really want to do that so I'm almost always flying out in the one direction and I'm almost always flying within say about five six hundred four five six hundred meters away from me I'm not usually flying right overhead very much and I don't usually fly super far away either so for me this one for that sort of medium range mostly in one direction seemed to be the best fit and that's the one that I found uh, found myself using and also because it's a little bit more lenient like I said on the direction you don't need to get it exactly pointing at the plane to get quite a nice picture so um, yeah hopefully that was informative and I'm sort of thinking maybe I should do this or should have done this with a 200 milliwatt transmitter so that the picture would have been worse overall and then maybe we'd see a little bit more difference in uh, at the distance especially these antennas will probably come into their own a little bit more in that situation but I think we can we can get a relative idea of how they perform still from what I've done here with the 600 milliwatt transmitter uh, so for me in the future like I say I'm probably going to get one of those diversity receivers on my goggles and in that case uh, I'll probably be using these two together um, as I said at the beginning these I think they are basically the same kind of thing and in the test that I did I didn't really notice a whole lot of difference the main reason I would go for this one over this one is the issue with the right hand connection connector here versus the silly bendy one which doesn't clear my head very well and this one being a whole lot taller is much better for that purpose so if you see me in the future sometime I'll probably be flying with these two together on my diversity receiver maybe <laughs> anyway um, hope that was informative thanks for watching and I'll see you next time